Hi there, I'm Eric Trulove and this is Drum and Drummer School of Percussion and uh, we're here today to show you how to set up a five piece drum set. This is a beginner kit um, made by Peace Drums and Percussion. Comes in these, these two boxes here, so we're going to dig right in and I'm going to show you how to set it up from beginning to end. So that was easy, we got it unpacked. Um, depending on which drum set you bought, if you bought the smaller version of these Peace drum sets, um, you'll only have to assemble two drums by, by putting the heads and hoops on. We'll get into that in a minute. This is the slightly larger sizes, 22 inch bass drum, 10, 12, 14 inch toms, actually 10, 12, 16. And so we've got to assemble four of these drums here. The first thing you might want to do is open up the tripod for the throne. Put the seat top on here and take a seat because this is probably going to take you maybe an hour to get this whole thing set up. And we'll walk you through it step by step. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is get these drums assembled whole. So let's go into that. So the first thing you're going to want to do as you uh, unpackage your drum set is look at the bearing edges here. You want to inspect the bearing edges, make sure there's no big gouges that uh, it could have possibly received you know, in shipping, in transit. Um, the bearing edges is important because that's what the drum head seats on and uh, really affects the tuning and how the, the tone and the sound quality uh, comes out on the drum. So this is obviously the bass drum and you want to determine which side is the front and which side is the back. Your uh, double tom holder should be a little farther forward. The legs, the spurs they call them, that come out and stabilize the bass drum are going to be towards the front. So this is the front side, or called the resonant side of the drum. This side is the batter side, where the, where the pedal hits the, hits the drum. So the first thing we're going to do is put the two heads on this. Let's start with the batter side. Go ahead and set it down. You want to be on a nice soft surface like this. For the bass drum, the batter side is the clear one. The resonant or front side is the black one. And uh, I like to always have my logos matched up. It's just a nice uniform way to assemble these. So the piece logo would line up with the piece logo there. So just set that on there. It should sit on there pretty pretty easily and then grab one of your bass drum hoops. These always have a seam. The plastic wrap, this is a laminate plastic wrap, uh, has a seam where it meets together down here. I like to put those at the bottom. It doesn't matter on these particular hoops really which side is out and which side is in. Sometimes they have a flatter side that would go down towards the drum head. can't really tell if this does or not. They feel about the same. So put that seam towards the bottom and now we're going to get our tension rods and our claws. These are our bass drum claws. Get this box full of goodies here. So we get started with a couple of claws as I throw them around. And these are the longer, there's two bags of tension rods in this box. These are the longer ones. They go for the bass drum and it's just a, a screw. They each have a, a washer on here as well. So what we're going to do is feed that through the hole, hook it onto the hoop, and with your fingers just start to thread it on there. You can go around, there's going to be eight of these on each side. So we'll get those started. So I'm not going to get too much into tuning drums today on this video, um, but just enough to get you started here. Basically, the tighter you stretch a head across the drum, the higher the pitch goes. This is a bass drum, we don't want a high pitch, so we're not going to tighten it down very much. We have to tighten it down a certain amount. We want to basically turn all these as tight as you can get them with your fingers and go across. You can tune. Tighten, we'll tighten them more with a tuning key here in just a minute, but for right now just go around and get them as, as tight as you can with your fingers. And 
keep going around a few times because as you tighten a few, then it makes the ones next to it a little looser. Okay, so that's all tight. Here's our drum key here. So what we want to do is stretch the different bands, and there's four different bands of tuning across a drum like this that has eight lugs. So what we're going to do, since everything's finger tight at this point, is we're just going to give it about two half turns here. A lot of this is a feel thing that you get to develop after doing it for so many years. You, you learn how to tune by feel and by, by your ear, but we're going to get you just started so that you can get your beginner kit going. Basically you want to make sure that you're, it's tight enough to remove any wrinkles out of the drum. And I see a little wrinkle right here, so I'm going to tighten this one just a touch more. Basically, like I say, we're not going to get too much into tuning, but you want to listen for inconsistencies. If one's a little higher or a little lower, you want to try and get it as even as possible. And then you get your batter head and your resonant head as close to relationship of the same tuning as you can for the best sound. So now we're going to get onto our resonant side of the head of the bass drum, but first we're going to put some muffling in here. So I just grabbed an old sheet. You can use a pillow. They make specific bass drum pillows. You can throw, you know, a sweater in there. I found some really interesting things inside bass drums. Uh, one time, found some old newspapers from 1969 that had advertisements for cars in there for $1,950, brand new. And found some old jade earrings inside of a bass drum. Found a, a puppet. That was pretty cool. Um, so you never know what people stuff inside your bass drum. Maybe it could be a little time capsule. So, anyways, a little padding in there. Um, a lot of times you see uh, a front bass drum head with a hole cut in it, and that serves a couple different purposes. One, it lets some air out, so it changes the feel of the actual drum and how it rebounds. Um, it also allows you to reach in and adjust your muffling in there, and it also enables a microphone to be placed inside the drum if you want to mic it that way if you're going to record yourself. So those are all different reasons people cut a hole in the bass drum. Um, there's several different ways to do that. Uh, one best way is to get a bass drum hole cutter that makes a nice perfect little hole in there. Uh, some people will heat up a coffee can that's cut out on both sides, heat it up and melt a hole in there. I've seen people do that, never tried it myself. But anyways, we're gonna, we're gonna bypass the hole cutting process today and just put the front bass drum head on. So just like I did with the batter head, I'm gonna line up the logo, make sure it's going to sit straight and it's nice and even with the top of our tom mount. So unless you want it crooked, some people do. I like mine straight so that when you when you set the drum up, it's going to it's going to be nice and straight. You're going to find the seam on the hoop it goes towards the bottom. And now we're going to repeat the same process with our with our claws and our tension rods and uh, put this bass drum head on. So now we got the bass drum put together, got a little muffling in it. Sounds pretty good. So the next thing we want to do is put the spurs in, or the, the bass drum legs. And we're just going to insert them into the into the little receiver here. Sometimes these wing nuts are tightened a little too far to let them go in right away, so you gotta loosen those up and snug them down. Whenever you, you're working with one of these wing nuts, you don't wanna over tighten it, because so you can strip them out. So just, just snug it down. Just needs a little bit of help to keep, keep it in place there. Don't, don't need to crank down on it too far. Now it's normal to have a bass drum lifted off uh, a little bit in the front. Don't need to be too drastic, but again, now we want to check and make sure that our our logo is uh, is parallel to the ground, nice and straight. Okay, 
which is also going to affect our toms if they're sitting in the right angle or not. So that looks pretty level. I mean, you could actually set a level on there if you wanted to. Get really technical about it. Okay, so our bass drum is almost complete now. What we need to do is install the bass drum pedal. So here's a bag that has our key in it and a little extra rubber pad that can help with, uh, with this pedal not moving around. So this is how the pedal comes out of the box. Now there's springs on both sides here, so what we want to do is turn that down and just hook it right on there. Just like so, sits in that little, that little groove there. And then there's a hole underneath here that this little tab is going to fit inside. So it might be kind of hard to see that, but it's in there. Sits down in that tab like this. We're also going to loosen this wing nut up almost to the point of this, this thing coming out. And what's going to happen is this and this are going to clamp onto this bass drum. So one thing you want to make sure is that there's a little notch right here in the, in the metal. You don't want to really go past that. Push it on there as far as you can because you don't want this part of digging into the head. So make sure that you're sitting right about there. And now we're going to tighten this down so it clamps onto the, the hoop. That one we are going to get just a little bit tighter than the rest. Make sure it stays on there good and tight. Then we've got the bass drum beater. Slides in here. Again, you don't want to push it down so far that it's going to dig into the head right there. So just far enough and then tighten it down. You want to make sure that it's not angled to the side but it's flush flat against there and it's a double sided. This side's just a little bit squishier and softer than this side will give you a little bit different sound depending on which side you use. Now the bass drum is the only drum that gets hit in the same exact place every time. The drumsticks you kind of move all over and you hit in different spots but this one gets hit in the same place every time so you can add what's called a phallum pad to it. It's a little adhesive piece of um, material. A lot of times they'll make them out of uh, what they make bulletproof vests out of and uh, and uh, or even just plastic and it just uh, lengthens the life of your bass drum head and uh, make sure you're not going to break through it. These are these drum heads that come with these entry level kits um, are not the best drum heads. It's kind of like the cheap tires that come on a brand new car. You might want to upgrade to better tires, better wheels, tint the windows, put in a good stereo system, all that stuff and kind of pimp out your new drum set. So there's certainly upgrade options that we offer to uh, to add to this drum set as as uh, you see fit. So there's our bass drum. You can also, uh, if you have a wrench, you can loosen this little nut on the, each side, loosen, uh, bring it up a little bit, and then you can tighten the bottom one, which is going to stretch that spring out. You do that with each one, and that'll affect how tight the spring feels, and, and actually the, the action on the bass drum pedal um, is adjustable that way. We're going to leave that one right there and move on to the next step.